So we've spent a fair amount of time discussing the situation with Dawn mods about how they can only go into Dawn specific armor, what are the ramifications of this, what are the issues and the solutions. But one thing we haven't talked about is, are these mods even good? Are they even worth using or investing into? I will get on that in this video with talking. Dawn mods are split into two categories, Becoming Charged and Wild Charged. Half of them give you light when you fulfill a certain criteria, and the other half use the light, giving you some sort of bonus effect. Now, right off the bat, I can tell you that the advantage of these mods is that they work anywhere. They are not nightmare mods, they are not raid mods, these will provide global use. But our opportunity cost is that final mod slot and the potential energy we spend on Dawn mods versus any other mods that we could drop either in those slots or any other mods that we could use with that energy. You can stack charged with light up to two times, only being able to stack it to 3x with another Dawn specific mod. Mods that use charged light will consume either one, two, or all three, if you have the potential to get to three, stacks, depending on the mod and the effect. Let's start with the charger mods. I'll be ignoring the elemental affinity of these mods for now. The following mod effects cost one energy in your armor and give you a charge when you meet the requirements. Breaking a shield of an enemy that matches the element of the gun that you have, using a finisher on an enemy which costs 10% of your super, and getting a rapid multi-kill with a sniper or linear fusion. The following mod effects cost 3 energy, picking up an orb of light, and getting a rapid multi-kill with a rocket or a grenade launcher. The Powerful Friends mod costs 4 energy, and this gives charges to people who are nearby you whenever you get charged with light, but we'll talk about this one more in a minute. And finally, for 5 energy, you can get charged with a rapid multi-kill with a shotgun or fusion rifle. So I think the easiest mod to use here is collecting orbs of light, aka taking charge, depending on if you have any masterwork weapons or not, specifically primaries, and depending on if you're in a group or solo. Orbs of light are everywhere. They're super easy to generate if you have a masterwork primary weapon, and they require basically no extra input on your end. You don't need to do anything special other than picking up orbs of light. Best of all, orbs of light are generated quite frequently, which is what we want. We don't really want getting charged with light to be a rare thing. Of the rapid multi-kill mods, the shotgun and fusion rifle one looks the most appealing simply because you can make that happen much more reasonably than the other two mods. Although multi-kills with snipers aren't too bad, but I'd rather be using my sniper ammo on killing big targets and not rapid multi-kills on weaker targets. Breaking a shield of a matching element means you're at the mercy of the game to provide charged light to you, which I don't think is really a great thing if we're trying to maximize use of these mods. Using a finisher isn't a terrible idea. The mod is cheap, you can make it happen on demand, it just takes a little bit of super energy. If you can't use taking charge, then I would say this mod is probably the next best option, but if you use it frequently enough, you may not be able to use your super that much, which is not ideal. The sharing mod, aka Powerful Friends, is where you can give out charges to people when you become charged, which is pretty cool. But there are a couple of caveats. Number one, not only do you need to be wearing the mod to give charged light to your teammates, but they also need to be wearing the mod to receive that charged light. And two, the radius in which you can distribute charges to people is pretty small. I had a teammate standing by the lockers in this clip, and I picked up an orb where I'm standing, and they did not get a charge. For our light consuming mods, we have the following effects. For 2 energy, you gain damage resistance when your shields are broken, with more stacks giving a longer timer on this effect. This effect wipes all of your stacks. For 3 energy, you can give void kills a chance to drop special ammo with more stacks giving a higher chance. Ammo dropping consumes all stacks. For 4 energy, we have 3 options. A weapon damage boost until you kill an enemy, consuming 1 stack when the enemy is killed. 
grenade final blows will heal you, or you get some grenade energy back when you use a grenade. For 5 energy, you can generate an orb of light for your fire team, not yourself, whenever you get a melee kill or sword kill when you are charged. If you have another arc mod in the same armor piece, you get damage resistance in PvE while sprinting. And for a whopping 7 energy, you can get half of your melee energy back when you use your melee attack. As a bonus for meeting the extra requirements, getting a kill with a shotgun, sidearm, fusion, or SMG while surrounded will give you ammo to your reserves for that weapon. We also have two mods in the other category. One of them costs two, which increases the capacity of charged with light stacks that you can have by one, so it goes from two to three. And another mod, Stacks on Stacks, which costs four, that gives you an extra stack whenever you become charged with light. I'm going to be honest with you here. None of this is really super enticing to me. At least not enough where I would feel the need to go out and create a full armor set with the correct elemental affinities just to use these mods. The damage resistance mod, Protective Light, is good as a defensive option that you don't even really need to think about. It simply activates automatically when you lose your shields and requires no other input. Damage resistance becomes better the higher the difficulty of the activity that you're in, so in master level content, it's a pretty solid deal considering the low energy cost investment. I have no doubt that this will save you at some point and is good for builds that require you to play a little more aggressively. The straight up damage boost in high energy fire gives you a 20% damage boost to all of your weapons while you are charged. The damage boost does not change at all regardless of the amount of stacks that you have, it is always 20%. However, this effect does not stack with other damage boosts, pretty unsurprisingly. I still think this is a pretty good mod though considering the other mods and fortunately it has no elemental affinity. I've used the melee, sword kill, orb of light, ammo generating mod in the sundial, and I was pretty underwhelmed, costing me 8 energy across 2 armor pieces. It essentially resulted in a couple of extra orbs of light being generated every once in a while, and that's with me using a build designed around melee kills specifically. So I could have something like an intellect mod and a grenade mod for this setup. This setup would be a net gain for your team overall, but if I didn't have these mods, it really wouldn't make a huge difference. We're so strong already that a few extra orbs of light here and there are not really going to make or break anything. Extra reserves is just a slightly different version of special finisher to me. It doesn't take much to coordinate special finisher in a group. It generates ammo for the whole team. Yes, it's somewhat costly with super energy, but it's a guarantee when you need it. And it only costs two with no elemental affinity. Not to mention that the game is relatively good at giving you special ammo when you're completely out of special ammo. You also need to be using void damage for these kills as well. I could see this being decent in Master Nightfalls with Famine as a modifier, but otherwise, as long as you're swapping weapons every so often, you're not really going to have ammo problems. The Big Boy 7 cost mod Heavy Handed only seems worth it if you're able to fulfill the bonus effect as well for activities like Sundial and Gambit or if you're running some sort of high energy melee based build that relies on the actual charged version of a melee attack as opposed to just hitting something with your fist. But half energy on a melee isn't too bad. Is it seven energy good though? I mean, the Mark 44 standard sides give that amount of energy back on a hit. So it's sort of almost like exotic quality. I probably would not use this mod without a pretty good build in mind for it. Heal thyself healing seems pretty neat, but I don't think is really worth the effort considering you don't get your grenade cooldown very often outside of grenade focused builds. And I feel almost the same with getting some more grenade energy when you use a grenade with firepower. The heal is not a full heal, it's a chunk of health, but nothing I would really consider noteworthy. 
at least with the grenade energy return, you can utilize a grenade focused build, say on a warlock using Crown of Tempest. But I guess that's the same for the heal. But the portion of grenade energy you get is just that. It's it's a it's a portion, all right. It's a very non generous portion. And using both mods at the same time means you need a pretty steady flow of charged light coming in, which in my opinion means you need to have either the additional capacity mod, additional charges mod, or both. And even then, the effects don't really seem potent enough compared to something like literally any armament mod. That's the main thing. You need at least two pieces of gear, a charger and a detonator. It's not just one armor piece that you need to invest in, like with, you know, armament mods, as rare as armament mods might be. Now, over the course of the entire season, I don't think that's an awful lot to ask for, but as of the making of this video, which is at the very start of the season, it's not super enticing, even if high stat roll armor is available in the season ranks after about rank 35 or so. The one build that I could recommend is a team-based build. This would require everyone in the fire team to be using Taking Charge, High Energy Fire, and Powerful Friends. Powerful Friends gives everyone near you, and I mean near you, a charge when you get charged. Taking Charge is our Orb of Light Charged Light Generator, and High Energy Fire gives us that 20% damage boost. This results in a fire team that is constantly refreshing stacks of Charged Light from themselves and each other, while gaining a 20% bonus to their weapon damage for a, hopefully, significant portion of time. You also have room to include Charged Up, giving you extra light capacity, or Stacks on Stacks, giving you multiple charges per charge or both if you want to invest that much. But notice that this build also takes the easiest and least effort requiring mods as well, on top of the fact that two of the three mods require no elemental affinity. That's the main gripe at the moment. It feels like too much work, both in terms of needing the proper elemental affinity and good stats on your armor, and in terms of needing to fulfill the requirements and play around the mods themselves, for not enough of a payout. It definitely pushes focusing on a build even more, but not to the point where any of this feels super valued. I could play the rest of the season having never touched these mods and I would be just fine. Conceptually, I like the idea of charging yourself up and then meeting conditions to boost yourself, but I think the Dawn mods, at least in PvE, need a little more oomph before I would consider investing farther. In PvP, you can get high energy fire to get some slightly faster kills, you know, body shotting with snipers, two tapping with 110 RPM hand cannons. Taking charge is the only mod I'd ever consider for PvP to generate charged with light, and high energy fire is the only mod I consider to consume those charges. I don't know what specialty mods you're using in PvP that you couldn't use these, especially considering they're so cheap and have no elemental affinity. I feel like I could pretty easily jam these into my PvP armor if they had the proper mod slots anyway. That is all I have on the Dawn mods for you. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.